Hello and welcome to an all new episode of Computer TLC. Let me take you back to HD land because I think it's almost two years ago that I received this big box. When it arrived I already thought that it was quite oversized for the item inside. I went ahead and opened the box, discovering a bunch of Ziploc bags on top of a black laptop bag. At first I didn't quite get what the seller intended to do with, with these empty bags, but then I realized that he or she probably tried to recreate those bags made by the sealed air company. So let's see what's inside the bag. The bag has some compact branding. Opening it we find a compact LT Elite 440C. It has these nifty keys on the screen that can act as a mouse keys. On the bottom someone replaced the feet with pieces of duct tape and there appears to be the remnants of an old sticker. The I.O. on the back is simple, a serial port, a port probably for a docking station, a PS2 port and a VGA output port. Let's start with the TLC. I applied some WD-40 to the sticker residue and let it sit then cleaned it off. I removed the duct tape and found some degraded rubber feet that I scrubbed with some 96% alcohol. I repeated that with all four feet and then gave the underside a good overall scrub with some more alcohol. The feet look much better now. Then it was time to test the laptop. Nothing happened, as I already feared. The screen worked, but nothing booted. The photo shown on the listing on the Dutch version of eBay clearly showed that the system worked, but probably because of the bumpy ride caused by the unsealed airbags, the hard drive had suffered too much damage to boot. Fast forward about a year and move to 4K and we have this box. I took a gamble again, this time at two other compact laptops. The first one doesn't look half bad. and the keyboard feels nice. The second one seems to be in a more of a rough shape. Keyboard also feels nice, but it has some dirt below the screen that looks like it belongs to a mouse. Ew. On the side is this giant hole. I asked the seller about this, but he said there was no hole on the side. I guess he was a bit of a liar. Oh well, that's the risk of buying stuff of pictures. So here they are next to one another. As you can see, this one is very dirty. You can see there's enough of a reason to give it a good scrub, starting again with the rubber feet. That on these laptops are also degraded. Then the whole bottom with some alcohol. Let's give the keyboard a good scrub to remove all the old finger grime. Moving on to the next laptop. The dirt on this one seems to be particularly deep. I thought a whole bunch of alcohol might clear it away, but it didn't really help. Then I moved on to a more abrasive option, baking soda. Baking soda is very effective, but leaves behind some dirt that you will have to clean away. Then I finished with some window cleaner. Then 
Then I remove the mouse gun. This laptop also suffered with the same rubber feet problem, so those I removed. And this old decorated sticker had to go as well. WD-40 cleared away most of it, but some baking soda was needed to clear away the last part. So let's do a quick overview. We have the first laptop with the shipping damage and the two laptops we just cleaned up. They look quite nice again, but if you have a sharp eye you might notice that there is another laptop corner just showing. Yes, I got another one. You can see this one is in an even more rough shape. And this one also suffered from some empty airbags. It's starting to feel like a curse more and more. It suffered some broken on snaps, but the seller said the laptop part still functioned. Interestingly, all of them have a different model number. We got the LT Elite 440C, the LT Lite 425C, the LT Lite 425E, and since I can't close the lid on this one, this is the LT Lite 425. They have the same overall I.O. with a serial port, parallel port, VGA output port, a docking station port, and a PS2 port, and a weird power port. I expected it to have the same power in like the first laptop, using an internal power supply, but I was wrong. That is the main reason that I got the other machine, since that one came with a power supply. Even the power supply has degraded rubber feet. The output is 18.5 volts. This machine might come in handy to replace the bottom cover on that one. Let's test the systems. I can hear it turning on. It appears to have quite a nice amount of RAM. Then we get the errors you see a lot when booting an old computer. The screen appears to be dead near the bottom. Let's try a MS-6.22 startup disk. Listen to this. Yeah. I have a feeling the drive is not working. Probably a belt that needs to be replaced. The first laptop, the Elite 440, suffers from the same problem. Moving on to the one without the screen, the 425. I connected up an old VGA cable to my AOC that has a lot of legacy ports. I turned on and did a RAM check. Considerably less RAM than the previous laptop, but this one also suffers from the floppy drive problem but the BIOS is perfectly accessible. The third laptop suffered from the same issues, but my camera only recorded two seconds of that for some reason. Additionally, this one suffers from a damaged power port. So I think the best first step to fix this laptop is to see if we can install one of these. A two and a half inch IDE to dual compact flash drive. So I removed the hard drive from the laptop, which is very easy and took it out of its caddy. Then I took the compact flash adapter. You can put two compact flash cards in it and it's quite a sturdy piece of hardware. It fitted very well in the caddy. Then I got out a one gigabyte compact flash card. I have smaller capacity compact flash cards but I want to try this one for now. I tested it in the laptop, but this time it doesn't give an image at all. I even tried the VGA output, but no image showed. Before we check out what causes this, I want to see if I can fix the faulty disk drive. So I took it out. It's barely bigger than a floppy disk itself. I will have to remove these small screws that I always find a pain to remove. The first one came out well, but like I expected the other ones didn't want to come out. I tried all of the bits that might fit, but the screws wouldn't budge. I was a bit fed up by now, so I got out my drill.
I could finally remove the motor. The assembly. There we find the culprit. So I poured some more alcohol and started scrubbing. And removing the leftover belt gunk. I want to take out the assembly that holds the disc. To do that I will have to remove the reed head. I know this might disalign the head, but I see no other way to fix this drive. So I removed the disc holder and continued cleaning. It's really an annoying task removing old belts that have degraded. Most of the time I watch some YouTube videos while I do this. Then I looked through my pile of leftover belts and installed the one I thought would fit the best. Then I reassembled the drive. And connected it to the laptop. It appears to spin up for a second every time, but the laptop doesn't want to read it. I was surprised that it wasn't too hard replacing a belt in one of these small disk drives. I expected it to be more difficult. I have more vintage laptops that require a belt replacement. I replaced the first belt. I don't know what the results will be, but we got three more drives to service and a whole bunch of other problems. I want to wrap up this episode of Computer TLC. Thanks for watching. There's the cursor again. Let's try it home. I plugged in the hard drive now. And we have more blinking lights here. And immediately we get the cursor. Ah! We got an error saying 4430 keyboard error. So it's running, so self test. Of course, normally here you would have the, the RAM also. So we got a little bit further. I hoped that turning off the camera would help because stuff always works when you're not filming. But I'll have a look around, see uh, what I can find, ask some people who read it like I always do. Maybe we can get this thing up and running in the next episode. Also of course with a pile of other laptops that I got because we got three more drives to service. So in a future episode, I want to see if we can get one of these compact laptops up and running again and break the curse of the compact laptops. Thanks for watching.